After being used as guinea pigs in an underground laboratory, three young people acquire superhuman abilities and must use their new powers to protect themselves from the scientists who plan to capture them. Today we're going to recap the first season of the series, The Imperfect, from 2022. The peculiar characteristic is what brought together three young people who, since they were children, have had to deal with a rare genetic disease that has altered their DNA. Tilda Weber is the lead singer of a band and for the past seven years has had to take controlled medication to treat her illness. Abby Singh is a scientist who is passionate about her research and, like Tilda, needs to take care of herself to avoid the side effects resulting from the disease. Her biggest dream is to pass Oxford and move to England. That way, she can devote herself to developing a serum that will reverse her condition. Juan Ruiz is the third patient detected with this disease in the United States. He's a very talented manga artist who dreams of making a living writing comics, but so far he hasn't had much luck with the publishers where he's presented his work. That afternoon, Abby goes for an interview with two representatives from Oxford University and, for some reason, they are both enchanted by her. Suddenly, the couple begin a dispute over who will be her advisor and the girl decides to leave, as she is terribly frightened. Hours later, Tilda takes to the stage for another concert. As she sings, she begins to hear pops in her ear and destroys the establishment screens with her voice. Stunned, the girl abandons the microphone and walks away, leaving the other members of her band to continue the performance alone. Juan hasn't been able to take his medication for three days and can't get in touch with the only laboratory that supplies the drug nationwide. Darcy realizes that her boyfriend is unwell and takes him to bed. The next morning, however, Juan wakes up alone in the middle of a forest and returns home with a bloody mouth. When he gets to his room, he finds that Darcy is fine and is extremely relieved to know that he hasn't caused her any harm. Searching the internet about a possible attack that happened the night before, the young man discovers that his victim was a raccoon, but he can't remember anything at all. That same day, he goes to a clinic, where he meets Tilda. Seven years ago, the two young people met there during a wellness program in which they were both guinea pigs in a genetic experiment. While they are talking, Abby appears and uses an air freshener to disperse the smell of her pheromones, avoiding causing any embarrassment among her colleagues. The three young people are there for the same reason, because they have started to have side effects since their medication was cut. At that moment, they are seen by Dr. Sarkov and the doctor says he needs to take some blood samples before giving them the pills. After taking the pill, Tilda returns to the studio where she usually rehearses with her band. Before going in, her super audition allows her to discover that she has been replaced as lead singer, which makes her furious. Upon returning to the lab, Abby also has problems with her co-workers and has to get under the shower to disperse the pheromones released by her body. The next morning, Juan wakes up in the middle of the forest again and this time his victim is a dog, whose body has been completely destroyed by the young man. Dr. Sidney Burke is in a makeshift laboratory in her home analyzing research data when she receives a call from Sarkov, her former work partner. The geneticist also has the same alteration in her DNA and was working with the doctor to find a cure. To date, however, neither of them has been able to make any progress in their research. After analyzing the DNA samples of the three patients, Sarkov makes a new discovery, but Sidney shows no interest in working with him again, as she knows that the doctor is used to illegal practices in his laboratory. A few days after going back on the medication, the trio realize that their condition is not improving and Abby discovers that Sarkov has deceived them. Instead of giving his patients the real medicine, the man gave them some children's aspirin pills, which are completely useless for the treatment that they need instead. So they decide to return to the clinic and meet Sidney. The woman tells them that Sarkov took away the young people's medication just to see if they would develop any side effects and offers to help them find a cure for their illness. The geneticist has been working on this research for the last decade and invites the trio to her private laboratory. As they are about to leave, they are approached by a mysterious guy who plans to steal the vials of synthetic stem cells that will be used in the research. But before he can catch them, Juan turns into a chupacabra and attacks Doug. When the creature was about to devour the girls, Sidney put it out with a tranquilizer and he woke up a few hours later in the geneticist's laboratory. When he discovers that he has eliminated a human for the first time, Juan despairs and Sidney takes the opportunity to study the body. While analyzing his organs, she discovers that this guy was also a guinea pig for Sarkov and, as a result, has acquired super strength. Suddenly, Doug's organs start to regenerate and he attacks Tilda. In an attempt to save the young woman, Abby pierces the young man's heart and sends him back to the world of the unliving. Soon afterwards, his heart regenerates and starts beating again. To prevent Doug from coming back to haunt her, Tilda decides to remove his head and then Juan and Abby bury the young man's body. At this point, Juan finds a camera and, on analyzing the images, the group discovers that Sarkov sent that guy to record images of his patients. 
Then Tilda notices that there is another girl who was the doctor's guinea pig and is also without her medication. Worried about the young woman's health, Abby says they need to go after her, but no one knows where Hannah is. So the trio decide to dig up Doug's body to ask him personally. After taking the body to the laboratory, Sydney fits Doug's head in and immediately the two ends begin to join together. Now they will have to wait until all the tissues have had time to regenerate and Doug wakes up. When this happens, Abby goes to talk to him and discovers that, despite regenerating, Doug feels pain just like everyone else. So he felt everything they did to his body and can even describe the smell of the wet earth when he was buried. Like the rest of the group, Doug is looking for Sarkov and still has hopes of being cured. However, when he discovers that the doctor has disappeared, he asks Abby to eliminate him painlessly. In return, the young man promises to tell her everything he knows about Hannah. After talking to her friends, Abby accepts the deal and Doug reveals that all the information about Sarkov's patients is on his computer. However, when he searches the names of the patients, Juan doesn't find any information. So they both return to Sydney's house. However, when they get there, they discover that the girl freed Doug because she didn't want him to be eliminated. At that moment, they discover that Doug is in the garden and has caused an explosion to take his own life because he couldn't stand living in so much pain any longer. After cleaning up the remains of the metahuman's body, Tilda decides to return to the laboratory and hears dozens of pieces of equipment switched on behind a cupboard. When he moves it, Juan finds a door that leads to a secret room where Sarkov has hidden all his research in a laptop containing the information he has collected. Using the device, the group finds Hannah's location and Abby goes to the coffee shop where she works. After a brief conversation, Abby realizes that Hannah doesn't know how to find Sarkov and goes to break the sad news to her friends. So the only option left is to get in touch with the other volunteers who took part in the research in, when they go through his laptop, they discover that Sarkov has eliminated many of his guinea pigs because he considers them to be imperfect. That afternoon, the young people return home and Juan accidentally reveals his secret to his girlfriend. Just as she is about to close the cafe, Hannah receives a visit from Isabel Finch and the woman asks for her help in taking revenge on Sarkov and other scientists who are just as dangerous as he is. For the time being, Sydney has managed to hide the truth about her powers, but her nightmares are getting worse and worse and the geneticist realizes that she may be putting the lives of young people in danger. After contacting numerous volunteers from the welfare program, Abby receives a call from Max and he tells her that he will be receiving a visit from Sarkov the following day. The young man promises that he will send the address to the young woman, but the truth is that he plans to capture other guinea pigs to carry out tests on them. After discovering the truth about Juan's side effects, Darcy says she will support him in whatever he needs and even sympathizes with the beast. That morning, he goes on a short trip with his friends and, before leaving, Abby gets a pheromone-canceling spray. As he is about to get into the van, Juan asks Tilda to tie him up so that he doesn't risk hurting anyone if he turns into Chupacabra. On arriving at the address, the trio are greeted by Max, who invites them in and asks them to make themselves at home while they wait for Sarkov to arrive. While Abby goes to the bathroom and Max presents the house to Tilda, Juan talks to Melanie about his comics and, when he least expects it, the woman knock him out with a tranquilizer. At that moment, Tilda is also attacked, but Abby is smarter and uses her powers to force Kamara to tell the truth. Then the girl discovers that the real Max is eliminated and they have been lured to that place to serve as guinea pigs. Using her pheromone, Abby convinces Kamara to inject herself with a sedative. She then hides in a room where she finds the body of Max, who had turned into a fishman before he perished. Terrified, the young woman walks through the corridors of the old mansion and ends up being captured as well. When she wakes up, Abby is chained up and discovers that the guy who lured her to that old mansion is actually called Nate. While he takes blood samples from Tilda, Melanie raises the temperature in the room to collect Abby's sweat. That way, they can study her pheromones. However, in a moment of distraction, she attacks the scientist and removes her mask. Immediately, Melanie loses control and starts following Abby's commands. After freeing her, the scientist is ordered never to touch Abby again and decides to take her own life because she can't bear the thought of living without her. Abby then goes after Tilda and, after getting rid of Nate, frees her friend. Now the pair just need to rescue Juan to get out of there. The young man is being electrocuted when the girls appear, but Kamara manages to put on a mask with an oxygen filter before being affected by Abby's pheromones. She quickly draws her gun and threatens to shoot her guinea pigs, but her plan is interrupted when Juan transforms and Kamara is torn apart by the chupacabra. Before leaving, Tilda meets Nate on the way and uses her voice to throw him against a shelf. Then Abby takes a vial of the stem cells they've synthesized and the scientist is left with wounds all over his body. After transforming, Juan runs away and hides in the forest, so the two girls have no choice but to leave without him. 
Hours later, Jim Sponson arrives at the mansion and finds the scientists already lifeless along with Max's monstrous body. So he decides to call in a cleanup crew to collect the bodies and go after the creature that eliminated those three. At this point, the chupacabra is already far away and invades the backyard of a house. On noticing the monster's presence, Alejandro grabs a baseball bat to attack it and, when he gets to the garage, he finds his brother. Hours later, Tilda and Abby arrive at Sydney's house and soon discover that there is a superhuman intruder inside. However, they soon discover that this is Owen Schultz, also from the welfare program, i.e. another of Sarkov's guinea pigs, down to making him totally invulnerable to any external threat and Sydney invites him to do some tests in her laboratory. Juan then goes to talk to his niece and discovers that Paloma never knew he existed. Since their parents perished, the two brothers have been separated and have never seen each other again. Because of everything that has happened between them, Alejandro doesn't want to include Juan in his life again. When he finally gets through to Tilda, the young man says he's fine and tells her he'll be back in Portland soon. After taking Owen's blood samples, Sidney asks him to wait in the garden and the young man begins to show signs that he is losing control of his powers. At that moment, he spots a girl hiding behind the bushes and goes after her. When he manages to capture Hannah, the young man takes her home and Sidney begins an interrogation. The young woman then claims that she went there to help them look for Sarkov, but Owen is convinced that she is lying and attacks her. At this point, Sidney and the girls get to know his true form and have to lock themselves in the laboratory before they are attacked by the man. As his body is impenetrable, Abby suggests using chlorine gas to block his lungs and prevent him from breathing. When the door opens, Hannah takes the opportunity to escape and Owen wakes up without remembering what happened while he was being dominated by his powers. After investigating the DNA samples from the crime scene, Jim detects three possible perpetrators of the attack and Juan is among them. So, after meeting the young man, he forces him to tell him everything he knows about what happened in the laboratory. However, Juan refuses to hand over his friends, so Jim attacks him and is caught by Paloma. He was about to eliminate the witness when Juan transformed and attacked him. After being bitten on the nose, the man gets into his car and drives off. When he gets home, Alejandro doesn't suspect a thing, so Juan says goodbye to his brother and niece and heads back to Portland, where he meets up with his friends again. Before saying goodbye to Owen, Tilda stole his cell phone and now uses the device to contact Sarkov. However, the man soon realizes that those messages were not sent by Owen and manages to escape. So the pair have to make another attempt to contact each other and arrange to take a ferry to the San Juan Islands, where Sarkov has a meeting scheduled for the following morning. When they arrive at the doctor's mansion, they go downstairs and, upon entering the basement, prevent Sarkov from eliminating yet another of the monsters he himself has created. After Zoe escapes, the man decides to go after her before the creature hurts other island residents. While searching for the girl, the man finds her first victim and must hurry if he wants to prevent more people from dying. However, he is surrounded by a group of villagers whose mission is to stop Sarkov from eliminating the young woman. Seeing them approaching, Juan and Tilda hide in the woods while they watch the doctor being taken away. When everyone leaves, Tilda uses her super hearing to find Zoe, but the young woman runs away before they can talk to her. When she approaches a tower, the mutant absorbs all the electricity and then releases it in an explosion. Because of this, she doesn't want to go near her relatives for fear of hurting them. The big problem is that if the girl doesn't show up, Sarkov will be eliminated. So Tilda comes up with the idea of turning off the electricity to the whole island with her supersonic screams and Zoe's mother is extremely relieved to see her alive. Suddenly, the generators supply more electricity to the small town and Zoe absorbs all the energy. However, when the young woman is about to explode, Wang uses his own body as a shield and manages to prevent other people from getting hurt. After saving Zoe, the couple take Sarkov to Sydney's house and soon discover that the scientist has been captured by Isabel Finch. After discovering that the woman was eliminating people, Hannah decided to break her alliance with her and went to warn Sydney that she was in danger. But now it's too late, as the scientist has disappeared without a trace. Then, when Sarkov shows up and attacks the woman to get her to reveal the whereabouts of her former co-worker, something completely unexpected happens and the group discovers that Isabel and Sydney are the same person. According to the woman, she didn't know that this was a symptom of her illness and can't even remember what she did while another personality took control of her body. While the scientists are in the lab talking about a possible cure, Sydney's house is surrounded and Tilda saves Juan from being shot. As they are surrounded, Abby decides to go out to talk to Dr. Crane and the woman suggests that she and her friends surrender peacefully. If they refuse to allow the flux agents to take some blood samples, they will all be eliminated. Upon hearing this, Sydney decides to lock herself in her laboratory with Sarkov to carry out new tests in order to find a cure for her DNA. 
Furious at having been put in that situation, Hannah decides to leave, but ends up being shot. Immediately, Abby returns to the laboratory and takes a sample of Doug's stem cells to inject into the girl. In doing so, Hannah's wound begins to heal and suddenly all the power in the house is cut off. Flux agents then invade the residence and the youngsters have to use their superpowers to defeat them. When they realize that they can't win this battle, the soldiers retreat and Abby despairs when she discovers that Hannah hasn't survived. At that moment, she begins to exude a different kind of pheromone capable of modulating the emotions of her friends, making them angry too. Immediately, the trio goes into battle and, while Juan transforms into Chupacabra, Abby uses her powers to control the soldiers, making them eliminate each other. While trying to talk to Crane, Abby becomes the target of Agent Jim, but Hannah shows up and manages to take him down with her super speed. When she discovers that the girl is alive, Abby feels relieved, but Dr. Crane still plans to take them as guinea pigs. Determined to save the lives of these young people, Sydney offers to serve as a sample for Flux's experiments and, in return, Crane and her team must leave them alone. The good news is that Sarkov has managed to discover the cause of the genetic disorder and, very soon, he will be able to find a cure for all the young people who have taken part in his wellness program. That night, in the city of Portland, a couple is attacked by a new monster and the three young people decide to go to the crime scene to investigate. When he gets there, Juan finds Darcy and accompanies his girlfriend back home so that they can talk about what has happened over the last few days. After analyzing the crime scene, Abby goes to the hospital and convinces a policeman to take her to the room where the victim is being cared for. As the woman is in a state of shock, Abby is unable to talk to her and only takes a blood sample before leaving. After an argument with her boyfriend, Darcy decides to leave the house and is surprised by the same monster that attacked the couple the night before. However, before the creature could hurt her, Juan appears and bites the monster, which digs its claws into the chupacabra's abdomen. When he wakes up, Juan is in Sarkov's lab and finds that his girlfriend has taken a bus to Vancouver to spend some time at her parents' house. After waking up, Juan reports that while he was unconscious, he had macabre nightmares, then the doctor reveals that the poison contained in the monster's claws causes paralysis and hallucinations. After analyzing the creature's DNA samples, Abby discovers that the monster they are looking for is actually Nate, who has returned to take revenge on the trio who eliminated his friends. The next morning, Abby and Juan receive the news that Sarkov has managed to finish the serum that will make them human again and the girl calls Hannah to tell her the news. Just then, Nate appears and Abby hears the screams of her friend, who is being attacked. She quickly drives to the young woman's house and receives a call from her enemy. The young man says he will only release Hannah when he is cured and becomes the first guinea pig to try the serum. When he wakes up, Nate is relieved to discover that he has regained his human appearance and, as agreed, reveals Hannah's location. The young woman perished dozens of times before being rescued, but Abby promises that she will be the next to receive a cure. Now that the girl has been found, Tilda decides to take revenge for all the people Nate has hurt and, after calling him, uses her vocalization to melt the man's brain. Meanwhile, in Lux's laboratory, Sydney begins to hear Isabel Finch's voice inside her head and starts talking to her. The woman is working on a cure when she discovers that Sarkov has already been able to create the serum and Crane has the body of the first guinea pig he cured. Convinced that they will be cured the next morning, the trio decide to drink to celebrate, however, as their friends fall asleep, Tilda leaves, having changed her mind about giving up her powers. With the help of her alter ego, Sydney manages to free herself minutes before being subjected to her first experiment and attacks Crane. The woman then searches the place for a way out, but soon discovers that she is trapped in a facility in the middle of the ocean. Then, with the help of a lifeboat, Sydney manages to escape and calls home when she reaches the beach. Just then, Juan answers the phone and Abby is relieved to discover that the geneticist is alive. Suddenly, the call is interrupted and Sydney doesn't have time to reveal Dr. Crane's real plan. Tired of depending on Sarkov to find a cure, Abby decides to use her knowledge to replicate the serum he developed, but Juan decides to go after Sarkov and Tilda. Knowing that he won't be able to find them alone, the young man decides to ask Owen for help, but the partnership comes to an end after they break into the wrong hideout and end up fighting a group of criminals. A few hours after fleeing Lux's base, Sydney finally makes it home and finds Abby. The young woman asks the geneticist for help in finding a cure, but she says that Sarkov is the only one capable of recreating the serum. Nevertheless, Abby decides to continue testing other hypotheses and carries out a new experiment using the mitochondria found in Sarkov's cells. After carrying out some tests, the young scientist confirms that she has found the cure, but Isabel accidentally drops the serum and now the only option is to find the doctor to collect more samples of the DNA. 
what they don't realize is that Sarkov is working with nanorobots capable of invading the body of any animal and controlling its actions. Juan is at his niece's birthday party when he notices a clown arriving and has to eliminate him because he turns out to be a Lux agent. Quickly, the young man has to hide the body and leaves after an argument with his brother. As he has no one else to turn to for help, he decides to call Abby and the girl immediately goes to his friend's rescue. After burying the clown, they follow the clue Juan got after talking to Tilda and manage to locate Sarkov's hideout. When she gets there, Isabel erases the two young people and goes to talk to the doctor to try to convince him to join her in her research. However, at that moment, the man decides to shoot Tilda, as the young woman has refused to be complicit in the new experiments he is working on, and strikes Sydney. When she wakes up, Abby rushes to the hiding place and finds her friend already lifeless. The girl starts freaking out when Tilda suddenly gets up and discovers that she has the ability to regenerate. At that moment, Abby reveals that Sarkov has taken Juan and Sydney, so they both decide to go after him. However, their rescue plan ends up being interrupted by Jim and they discover that, all this time, Sarkov was working for Dr. Crane. So the enemies decide to team up to find out what's going on and the two girls go after the doctor while Jim prevents Flux from trying to capture them. With Hannah's help, the pair manage to reach Sarkov's new hideout and discover that Juan has just received the dose of the serum that will cure him. Sarkov's plan was for the young man to become a chupacabra permanently, but instead he reverts to his human form and loses all his powers. Abby then applies the serum to Sydney and, from now on, the woman will no longer have to deal with Isabel controlling her body. Minutes later, Jim arrives on the scene to question the doctor and Abby uses her pheromones to force him to tell the truth. They discover that Crane is also working on a project that alters human DNA and Sarkov is finally arrested for all the crimes he has committed since he began his career as a scientist. Now that everything is settled, Tilda disappears once again and Abby returns to the laboratory, where she receives a dose of the serum that blocks her pheromones. When the young people leave, Sydney can finally rest for the first time after a very turbulent few weeks. Three months later, Tilda decides to become a vigilante and helps other young people of her kind to find a cure if they wish to give up their powers. After helping a girl who was about to be attacked, Tilda discovers that she has become a character in Juan's comics and is happy to know that the young man is managing to get on with his life after everything that has happened. However, both he and Abby realize that their powers are returning and are now even more out of control than before. So what did you think of this series? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.